Hey, what's up, guys? Rudolinol here, bringing you back with another Python tutorial. And uh, in the last video, we were checking out uh, getting the length of a data type, whether it be a string, like a tuple, a list, even an integer. We added support for that because we were we were taking a look at the length function or the len, that built-in Python length function, and we tried to recreate it in our in our own work. So today, we're going to do that exact same thing, except we're going to work with it uh, on a more deeper level. We're going to try and take a look at the length of multiple 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 data types so let's get let's get idle filed up fired up first of all and uh, we'll try things out idle come on kiddo all right now let's create a new program I'm gonna save mine as a uh, file dot Python as usual get my shebang line going around here and now let's define a class we can do base as usual get a constructor coming remember to pass in your self keyword don't ever forget that when you're creating functions inside of a uh, inside of a class now we can test if this is the current script we are running if name is equal to main and then if it is we can go ahead and create a root object that is going to be an instance of the base class and uh, now let's just print hello world I'm gonna get a couple new lines. If we run this, we get hello world, and it looks like our object is created. So let's get started. We're gonna try again by creating our new get length function. And we're gonna pass in self as always, and then usually we would just have an argument for the thing that we were getting the length of. Now, today we're gonna be looking at multiple things, so we're gonna change this to items, and we're gonna put our asterisk in front of it. So this way we can pass in all the function, at least we can pass in each argument and parameter, and it's going to interpret them as a list or a uh, or a tuple. So let's get our code block started, and we can begin. Now, last time we set up a length variable that we would iterate or at least increment every time we found something new. So this time we're going to use an all length, all lengths anyway, make that plural. That's going to become our array or our list. So now in this time, we're going to uh, loop through everything that we found, obviously. So we're going to go through four item in items. So we're looking through each thing that we've been passed. And now we can, uh, we can loop through it once again. We can check out for character in that item. Oh, sorry. In item, obviously. Not, not just that item. And then we can set uh, a length two plus equals one. And this is that same sort of tactic we were using earlier, except in the uppermost for loop, we're going to need to set that length variable. We're going to start nesting for loops because when we have one, um, like let's say if we tried to use self get length, and then we passed in this, and then another parameter is, and then another parameter a, another parameter string. We're looping through each of these by using that items variable, since items represents all of these. So we go for we go through f we use our for loop to go through all of them. This is a string. So we have those four loops first off, and then when we're inside each of those loops, we're going to go through the character for each individual one. So we start with this, and then we go through the character T H I and then S. So we do this individually each time. That's why we're nesting these for loops. So now when we add that length character though, we're going to have, we're going to want to add at the end of it, all lengths plus equals, and then the array form of our length variable. So now this should work. If we, uh, we when we get out of all of those for loops, we can return all length, all lengths. Remember to add that S onto your variable. And then, it looks like that's all of it. Let's give it a go. Let's print out whatever we get returned by this, a 5. So we have 4, 2, 1, and 6. Okay, this, this has 4 letters in it, is has 2 letters in it, a has 1 letter in it, and string has 6 letters in it. That works flawlessly. Awesome. But now we want to have support for that integer again. So we're going to put in that same conditional statement that we had last time, but we're going to want to put it inside that for loop before we start testing the item. So let's do an if the type of the current item we're looking at, remember there's no s here because we're looking at the individual one that we're looping through, 
if the type of item is an int, you want to change that to item equals the string form of item. So now we can get digits, or at least the number of digits that are inside an integer or any other number. So let's try mm, three right up here. One, two, one, six. Okay, so we've added support for integers. That's great. We've got the three there. That's one digit. We can change this one to, uh, how about, if I can select the thing, 228, 238, sorry, and we can run that. One, two, three, six. How about we add a, a tuple in here, or another array, or another list. We have one, two, we'll only put two things in there, and then we have two elements inside that. So we're getting the length of each individual thing that we pass to it, and we're getting it returned back to us as a list, or as a tuple, or as an array, or the whatever, whatever you want to think of it as, it's still each, informa each informational bit for each information that we send to it, that we send to that function. So, uh, so yeah, you can, you can keep playing with this idea, but remember you're going to be looping through each thing as much as you can to get all the information sapped out of it. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I know this one was a little bit more in-depth, but we're going to be looking at some really cool stuff lately and getting a lot of, getting ourselves more acquainted with some of the built-in functions and some of the things that we're able to do with Python. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.